Hi there and welcome to this month's solar update about my solar generation stats and all of the things going on uh, with my house. Uh, this is for August 2024. So what's new this month? Well, I suppose the big thing this month has been the four one hour free electricity sessions provided by Octopus. And boy, did I use them. Uh, if you haven't seen my other video I did about it, about setting up and signing up for those and about what I was going to kind of do in those hours, then have a look at that. Um, so what did I do in the end? Well, I did exactly as I planned, really. Water, battery charging, car charging, oven on, baking cakes, uh, dishwasher, washing machine, you name it. Um, I think my kind of uh, saving or my free electricity added up to about £2.50 on average per time. Uh, but we'll talk about more about that really in the uh, video and I'll show you the figures and things like that and uh, what I spent right let's have a look but before we get into the stats let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts 10 on the south and 4 on the east and a solar edge 4 kilowatt inverter so that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Hub, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Right, so here we are, the month of August. Total 715.39 kilowatt hours for the month. And if we divide that by the 31 days, we get around 23 kilowatt hours per day on average. That sounds pretty good to me. Uh, but the month did have a few ups and downs, as you can probably see here. The best day of the month was kind of mid-month, 16th of August for me, 34.6 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, and only a few couple, or how many got over 30? One, two, three, four, five, six days over 30. Um, yeah. Whereas most, as you can see, as I said, the average was 23. So we're kind of looking along this kind of part here. Um, yeah, the worst day. Well, I thought it was going to be the 6th, actually, until we got to the 24th. And the 24th only gave us six and a half kilowatt hours for the day. So that definitely wasn't very good. Um, but otherwise, it's not been a bad month. It's not been too bad just for those odd few days, which could have been better. Um, so let's compare it to last year's and see how we got on. So 715 kilowatt hours in August. It was slightly better than last year, I'm happy to say. I'm very happy to say because I didn't know if it was going to be. So this year, 715 and last year 703 so we did make 15 more kilowatt hours uh, in the month this year compared to last year although nowhere near as good as 2022 when we managed 783 kilowatt hours there uh, and again last month was fairly similar it was slightly better in july than the previous year in 2023 but again nowhere as near as good as 2022 uh, so, yeah, I'm really happy, actually, that it's got better than last year. Um, so that is comparable to the other years, a kind of good kind of average in there, really. It's just a shame now that we're coming into September and we all know what that means. Look at the previous years in here. We know we're going to be lucky if we kind of hit around the 550 now. Um, so we are on the way down unfortunately and I hate those kind of months as you come <laughs> down and you sort of wake up to really dark mornings uh, and things like that and you don't get much sun but I suppose you've got to appreciate those other months so you can clearly see on this graph really that you kind of get six months but kind of not quite I mean obviously the April is pretty good you get those five months to, to August and then you do take a little bit of a drop uh, in September normally so you get five really good months um, and then you kind of get ready for the transition into autumn and winter. Right. So how do we use all this lovely power? Well, let's have a look at the EV first or the EVs. Uh, so in August, we used 423 kilowatt hours uh, going into the two EVs. Uh, slightly up on last month when it was 380. That could have been because... Obviously, there was a few free one hour sessions through Octopus this month and we charged the cars up for those one, three, three, one hours or four one hours. Uh, so there's kind of about, you know, 
25 kilowatt hours in there extra that we probably wouldn't have used during that daytime. We'd have just left it to overnight or not even bothered charging actually if we hadn't had that free one hour. So 423 kilowatt hours for the month. So 423 kilowatt hours in uh, cars from the Hypervolt. And the total mileage for both the cars for the month of August was 1,751 miles. And if we take the 423 kilowatt hours and times it by 7p on Octopus Intelligent, it comes out at 29 pounds and 61 pence, even though we did have about 28 kilowatt hours for free by those one hour sessions. So the cost to us was a, was a couple of pounds less than that. Uh, but it works out at 1.7 pence a mile and we were which really means we were getting kind of 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour in the cars for the month okay so now regarding the hot water so in the eddy heating the hot water uh, overnight on the cheap rate of 7p a kilowatt hour on uh, octopus intelligent and then during the day from solar we used 153 kilowatt hours during the month of august and if i break that down during the day we used 62 kilowatt hours from solar and at night time, we used 91 kilowatt hours um, overnight on the 7p rate. So you can see here different spikes. So the bigger spikes are the overnight refills. And then the smaller spikes are kind of during the day from the solar power. So this is from within the Give Energy dashboard. This is the battery uh, and it just tells me how much um, I've actually exported. So exporting is quite important to me, really, because obviously now I'm exporting everything I can at 15p a kilowatt hour during the uh, summer. So in the yellow, we've got the solar power that's going out to the grid that I'm getting paid for. And then also the battery in the evenings. So I'm actually discharging that a little bit in the evenings, uh, what I'm not using. So in the last kind of, I don't know, two hours or so um, before it goes cheap again, I'm sort of exporting a little bit. And you can see that in the blue. I'm doing that manually at the moment. Um, so you can see in the blue that how much I'm getting out of there every day. If I don't forget to do it, that is. And you can see on that really bad day there from solar on the 24th, nothing went out to the grid. That was the worst day of the month, but I still managed to export a couple of kilowatt hours in the evening um, that we hadn't used. So the battery to the grid, 87.54 kilowatt hours for the month. Um, even though it's a bit of a faff to do it every uh, day, if I just times that by 15 pence per kilowatt hour, um, it does turn out to be 13 pounds for the month. So you might not think that's very much 13 pounds a month, but if you sort of times it by say six months of good solar, then that is 78 pounds, you know, 80 pounds for the year, which is fairly good saving if you can be bothered to kind of export the rest yourself. So for the electricity that we imported uh, during the month, it was fairly consistent all the way through the month, really. Um, as you can see here, it kind of sat around sort of 30 and under, except for those odd days, I think, when the car needed a good charge and we'd been out on a long trip for the day. And there was another one there of 40 and 50 and 30. Uh, but otherwise, they kind of sit around um, kind of an average kind of level. So what does that look like during the month? So in August, we used 861 kilowatt hours just slightly up on uh, July. So for the export, whatever kind of came in kind of went out. And this kind of graph really does match the uh, solar edge solar generation. So these bad days on the 6th and the 10th and the 24th were really low on export, but the others were fairly consistent. So for the month of August, 502 kilowatt hours, slightly up on July, but not quite as good as June. Right, let's go through some numbers then. So for the month of August, grid import, we imported 796 kilowatt hours at 7p on Octopus Intelligent, and that came to 55 pounds and 77 pence. And then during the daytime, we actually imported a lot more this month, at 64 kilowatt hours at 24 pence uh, day rate, came to 15 pounds 68. Now, the reason for that was those um, free one hour sessions that we made them or tried to make the most of. Um, that we kind of, I don't know, 10, 11 kilowatt hours in that one hour each time. Um, so that sort of added up, but we'll minus that, we'll subtract that at the end. And the export, five, just over 500, 502 kilowatt hours times 15p for the month of August gives us 75 pounds. 
Uh, that's pretty good. July was 465, so uh, August was slightly better on the export. Gas for August, spoilers still off, which is brilliant, um, but we have used the hob a little bit for cooking. So we used 11 kilowatt hours during the month of August at 5.4 pence equaled 60 pence. That was about the same as last month, to be honest. Uh, I did look at the gas tracker again. Uh, so for the average price for the east of England on the gas tracker tariff, uh, for August, it was 4.59 pence. Now, I did notice it's come up a little bit. Uh, I looked on the 2nd of September, uh, the day I'm making this video, and it has gone up a little bit, actually. Um, it's, close, it's It's gone to 4.9, which is getting kind of closer to 5.4, which is a bit worrying, but I'm sure this gas price is going to go up at the start of October anyway. Um, so I'm still thinking about moving to this gas tracker. I'll just see what it sort of, uh, see what the kind of price is like within a few days of when I uh, want to turn this sort of gas boiler on and actually make that move. So standing charges for August, same as July, 28 pence a day for gas times 31 days, £8.97. And electric, 47 pence a day times 31 days is £14.83. So a little more complicated for the electric, but £71.45 imported uh, plus the £14.83 standing charge, but then minus the export, which was £75.32, and then minus the uh, four free one-hour sessions during August, and they added up to £11.07, uh, gives us a minus of 11 pence. Uh, so we sort of more or less broke even on the electric including the standing charge in August. So all in all, the gas plus the electric comes to a total spend for the month of August, £9.46. So they were the stats for August 2024. Thanks very much if you made it all the way through. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Oh, it's always nice to hear about what your solar system got up to in August. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Um, and give us a like as well if you like the video. It always helps out. Uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.